Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And I've been saying that for years. But you know what else I've been saying for years? I've been saying, if you're not flexing, and if you can finish in your head, you know you're not soldering. But why? So I'll go ahead and tell you right now, this video is actually probably going to be on the shorter side this time just because flux is one of those fundamental core concepts that once you understand what it is, you're really, it's, it's not a practice thing. It's a, oh, okay, now I'm going to be doing thing. You know what I mean? So let's just jump into it real quick. What exactly is flux and what is it doing for me and my soldering? Well, number one, it is a detergent. It cleans. So as you heat it up on the board, it turns more acidic and it starts to eat away at any of the oxidation that's on the pads that you're working on, which allows metal on metal contact to occur. And if those two metals are wet in that liquid phase, they will go together. Now, with that being said, I think we all know that oxidation is one of those things that prohibits us from doing good soldering because if you want two metals to come together and stick together, there can't be anything in between preventing it, right? So if it cleans it off, helps it stick together, then the other job being a barrier, hmm, I wonder what that means. What that means is that when you add that extra little bit of flux to whatever joint you're working on, it will actually not only be that detergent, but that joint that is under the flux will now be protected, right? So now it's got a barrier to prevent further oxidation as you heat it up with the soldering iron. You see how it just did all that for you and all you had to do was bloop and add it to the joint you were working on. Now, I know a lot of people out there have a lot of issues getting solder to stick on stuff and to flow together and everything. And if you know that heat is not the issue, I would say that nine times out of 10, the number one answer to soldering related issues is you're probably not adding enough flux because once you actually have flux down there and you're at that wetting temperature on the board, right? And you've got that barrier protecting all of that metal from being oxidized again. Then at that point, once those metals touch as a liquid, they want to do something. Do you guys know? They want to create the smallest surface area possible. That's that surface tension video I keep talking about. Flux is the initiator of that, that surface tension jump with components. If you don't have flux, you can't do that. You guys see how important flux is now? You know what? I don't I don't think you see. So, let's hop over here and let me show you. All right. So, we're here now. Let's go ahead and get started, but before we do, you guys know I like to interrupt and tell you guys we're about to do something and talk about something else. So, we're going to do that again real quick. I know that a bunch of you out there are wondering, "Hey Justin, which flux are you using?" Specifically, I know y'all are out there. Y'all y'all email me. Y'all are very specific. I'm using Amtec NC559V2TF. NC559V2TF. And wouldn't you know and wouldn't you guess it, if you head on over to shop.artof.repair, they carry it. Who to funk it? The flux that I use carried by me. For you to use. It's that easy. Just head on over. Shop.artof.repair. Pick that up. Pick up all the other stuff you need. We'll get to soldering tomorrow. But anyway, with that, there are other kinds of fluxes out there. And, you know, personally, over the years, I've learned a couple things about flux and how to find a good flux. Number one, if you want to find a good flux, find a company that's been around for a while. Because most of the time, fluxes, are kind of like a secret recipe. So when you find a good one that works really good for you, you want to make sure you get a lot of it. But the problem is you can't buy too much because you have to refrigerate it. It's one of those things that as you heat it up, it activates. So it's not that you have to freeze it, but if you keep it at a lower temperature, it won't activate and it'll last longer. They do have expirations on them. This one actually just expired, look. So like I said, when you find somebody who's got something good, you want to stick with it, right? So if you look up a company and you've never heard of them before and you look them up and you don't really know much about them or they, 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 they've probably only been around for a year, 
it's probably safe to say that their flux is either not that good or it probably isn't consistent batch to batch. And you see that a lot with random Chinese uh, fluxes. You'll find that one batch will work one way and the next batch will bubble a whole bunch, you know? Um, I used to use a lot of the fake Amtech and you know, you can read on them that they've got little typos all over them. And if they've got typos on them, then what else are they skipping on, right? So uh, in terms of buying some other random fluxes out there, your mileage is going to vary. So be careful. Just make sure you're looking up the company who's selling it. Um, I do believe that there is a custom kit that is really high quality out there by, uh, I think his name's John McKenzie. You can probably look him up on Facebook. A lot of people are really happy with his stuff too. Um, but, you know, like I said, there's lots of different types of flux out there. Um, you've got that pure pine tar rosin that never comes off the board. I don't recommend that. Um, you've got imitation rosin type. Um, you've got you've got water soluble and no clean. And, you know, this Amtec right here is no clean. And what does that mean? It definitely doesn't mean that you don't need to clean it. And that's a fact. No clean does not mean no clean. It just means that whatever ends up being left on the board isn't going to damage the board over time. But if you're doing repair for customers, you need to clean it up. And by the way, I made a video about cleaning up flux. Y'all can check that out. Perfect flux cleanup. Anyway, without further ado, we've talked about flux. We've talked about which one I'm using. We've talked about what it does. Let's see it do its thing. Let's do it with and without. Let's do this. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to solder without flux so you can see what it looks like. And then we're going to solder with flux. Now, if you watched, and I've talked about this a million times, if you watch my surface tension video, you know that when all this stuff is in equilibrium and it's happy, all solder wants to do is create the smallest little bubble surface area possible, just like a water drop would. Um, so let's do this without flux and let's see if we can get that perfect little shiny solder. Okay, so I'm just taking my iron out. We're not doing anything. And I'll tell you right now, this feels weird inside. It feels weird in my soul. We're going to go down here. Make sure y'all can see. All right. And we're just going to see if we can get some nice, there we go. See if we can get it nice and shiny and clean. Uh, that's kind of weird. Hold on. What's going on there? Ugh. It's like, it's like it's going all over the place. What's going on here? And again, this is with no flux. So I, you know, it looks like we're, we're, we're soldering, right? Here. You see that? Hold on. It's kind of weird, but I guess it's working. Yeah, this isn't working that well. Let's try, let's try again. What's that? Oh, Flux actually has a third important job. And if you're still watching the video, now you get to learn about it and all the people who cut out already, they only got half the information. Ooh, fancy. So. Another thing that flux does is it helps transfer thermal energy. It's like a helper, right? So when you have it on there, it's heating everything in that area up to that temperature. Kinda. It's just a little helper. It's the third job. It's something it likes doing in its off time. You know what I mean? Help carry that thermal load, right? So now that we've seen here what happens when we introduce an oxidized iron to a joint, we basically just create oxidation. You see how the, hold on. I know, I you guys hate me for that. I'm, I suck at microscoping sometimes. You guys can see here, it's kind of just bulging out and doing weird stuff. And I, I don't really feel like that's an electrically sound joint. So let's clean this off. Let's add our flux and let's see if it makes a difference. And we haven't even introduced anything yet. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're just touching the joint that's already there. And theoretically, if you went back in and touched a joint that was already there, you could just improve it by giving, you know, that by going in there and heating the joint up and making sure that it's nice and liquid all the way through. So it's got a good electrically sound joint. You know, normally what I just did 
does nothing but help the joint. And I think we just messed it up a little bit. So let's add some flux here. There we go. And always remember, if you're not fluxing, that's right, you're not soldering. So we'll put a little bit on here. And like I said, it's a barrier. So as it melts and covers up the joint, it's going to be a barrier. As it heats up, it's going to be a detergent. Look how beautiful that went. Oh, wow. Let's put that one too. Actually, pretty high mass. What we got going on here? Well, it didn't look like we got anything from this guy. This guy was pretty easy, but look how the flood. Look how the solder looks now. It's nice and shiny. And here, let's let's clean it up. Yeah, you saw that no clean fluff gets pretty dirty, doesn't it? All right, so it looked like this bottom joint down here was a little higher thermal mass than what my iron was set to right now. So that one right here didn't really do anything. Um, but let's look at our first one that looked all nasty and scraggly. Look how beautiful that looks now. Flux is a barrier, flux is a cleaner, and flux helps you carry a little bit of that heat around. That's all you got to know. Now you know. You got to use that flux. I'll catch you next time. We did it. We figured out what flux was. Now you don't have to worry about it anymore. Now you don't have to think about it anymore. You know exactly what flux is as it pertains to micro soldering, regular soldering. doesn't matter. You're good to go. And just remember, anytime you're applying flux, just add a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And you're going to be just fine. Um, anyway, I hope you really pick something up from this today. You guys know I love every last one of you. And um, if you need the flux, you guys know where to get it, shop.artof.repair. And if you want to find your own, now you have some tips to do that as well. So I will catch you guys next time. I, I guess life calls.